what we're gonna do is get ourselves a little bit of sense of timing. My phone is terrible with this. Because we are in the 20th century, are observed in our little phones. I don't see Bitcoin price going past 14 and a half K, 15 K in December by, by 2021. You still there? How's it? Aloha and hang loose. Hang Welcome loose to Crypto you. Corner. We're doing a Crypto Corner with <clears throat> Odua Man. Introduce yourself. I am not the Odua man, but I am an Odua enthusiast. My name is Michael and I am a lifetime learner of blockchain technology. <laughs> I knows what I knows. And that's all that I knows. <laughs> this is a, basically a little Halloween special. Because it's Halloween. <laughs> it's Halloween. We're out hunting ghosts by looking at the Hawaii star sky solar cast i can't see the stars oh there's a star all right the audience cannot see the star so let's focus back on the audience yeah. what a wonderful world such more okay today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency again because it's crypto corner again and we're going to talk about uh i'm not a financial advisor so you know everyone's responsible everyone's their own bank you know you get what you get but your losses are your losses that means whenever i learn something i try to pass it along and i'm trying to learn as much as i can and of course our featured coin is a dual coin because disclosure i have a little a dual coin and i want it to be big big like bitcoin bitcoin made history today that's right yeah it's the great pumpkin bitcoin hit Fourteen thousand dollars today, and it's the first time in Bitcoin's history that Bitcoin may close the highest a month candle. Yeah, did you know? That's those little things in the end, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. red and green. So today is the thirty-first of October. If Bitcoin, check this out, guys. If Bitcoin managed to close over thirteen and a half thousand dollars, then it will be officially setting historical mark for closing the highest monthly candle in, if, in its a whole existence. In its whole bit. And looking history. at the time now, it's seven o'clock Hawaii Standard Time, so technically already clo closed yeah, in yeah, other parts the of the world. We're the last for the sun sets. And the Bitcoin is at $13,650, so it broke the mark, made history today. Yay, if you got Bitcoin. It's a special day. <laughs> It's a special day. If generally. Bitcoin goes up, does the door go up? That's a great question. Well, you know what I've noticed? I, I pay attention to the Odua market. I noticed that anytime there's a volatility, folks who have Odua, they sell it for Bitcoin. And the reason is this, that with any altcoin, Bitcoin will always be the king to trade it for. Yep. But I don't know i have i cannot predict the markets but i what i do know is that bitcoin goes up most likely will go up so that's the fomo fear of missing out if bitcoin starts going up people want to buy into it before it gets up higher yeah right yeah and then when they get lots of money then they're like yeah i got lots of money that then i'm in the bitcoin or not lots of money <laughs> but if they got like a pocket full of a dual coin and they see Bitcoin going up, then they sell off all their Adua coin. Yeah, so you know what I've observed is that, so the last three weeks, there's been a lot of updates in the Odua ecosystems, articles and announcements. Uh -huh. And you know how markets react? People react based on what they read. Um, so it would go up, and then Bitcoin started going up the last few weeks. Yeah. So big Odua would go down, it would go up, it would go down, it would go up. So look, you're kind of saying, the, like I have a little organic theory, people. Yeah, what is it? The little organic theory is, what is it? people are organic, and they have decision making, and they buy and sell using their decisions. And FOMO would be part of that organic theory. It's the organic factor. So 
Like, if I'm scared about something or in fear of, or if I want to get Bitcoin, oh, I got to get Bitcoin. That organically, as in my own decision making, make me want to buy. And that will reflect in the market price. Yeah. That's a that's a big, big element in the decision making is the FOMO. Yeah. That's a big one. Oh, I don't want to miss out. I'll get, get it before it gets... And then they start buying in when it's like already huge and they're like losing yeah, money. Watch, watch. It's... The one thing I can predict is FOMO will happen. FOMO will happen to the mainstream people who are not paying attention to the technology evolution. Hmm. They're just working nine to five jobs and they'll start hearing about Bitcoin and altcoins on the news. And they'll be like, what is that? They'll start ask, researching and then they'll go online and they'll go look at the graph and they'll see, oh my God, it's 2021. It's at all time high. How come I didn't hear about this? Mm. And then they'll buy in. Yeah. Because I know that people like really analyze the graphs and then they decide. But then you look at, oh, oh the president's not going to give the stimulus check. And then everyone, and then it reflects yeah. stuff in the yeah. news. Yeah, anyways, that's what the markets do. So, like, a lot of people like trading. Before we get into some of dual coin, because we got to, we're going to cover some cool-ass ground. But before we get into that, um, how's a dual coin doing? They're selling, so. Yeah, I don't know. Market price is going a little bit low. I don't, I, I don't pay attention to that. Well, when it's low, it's a good time to buy. I mean, when it's low... Time to scoop up a dual coin. But then again, it depends when you release this video, so it doesn't matter. Well, soon it won't be. Yeah. I'm not going to sit on it. <laughs> ah, we are just look kind of look back and see how we can improve on this video. Yeah, so like, um, what's behind a dual coin? Because the dual is not going to be all that volatile, right? Oh, yeah. It's got the purpose. What are we going to go over here? Yeah, yeah. The, thanks for asking that because I almost forgot. Uh, you want this? Sure, yeah. Or do a um yeah you see with any cryptocurrency in order to have market mainstream adoption and folks regular folks to feel if i may say secure there's got to be a system in place where they can feel secure right here i'm showing a regulation pamphlet here um, part of that is having a tether stable coin tether tied to the currency so tether coin this price is always going to be the same right yeah yeah it's tether like you know anchor in the ocean no, there's a tether. coin called tether it's it will be called odua tether and the market ticker will be ow's ow usd ow usd it was, so for every how much a dollar you have thought always equivalent to one ow usd okay um so if we um you know as you know we have a been working on the merchant gateway and what that means is any small business owner or a large business owner that can have the option to accept cryptocurrency well first of all that may say well why cryptocurrency and i would say well, it's go it's efficient and it's secure. Those are very simple answers. It's efficient and it's secure. The next question they'll have is what about the tax implications? Well, people are always looking about taxes. Always. And you go, Oh, the taxes are up to you and then someone's like going, oh, Okay, what do I do? So I get scared. Uh oh. Yeah. And they get hung up on the tax and they cannot get out of that fear. So what I tell them is I say, Well, the nice thing about the uh, blockchain ledger is that one is that a every transaction that you take in, send out is recorded on the ledger. And the second thing is that you have this uh, transparent digital ledger to go over for your records. Any use common sense, you know, any profit you make just so you be can't honest. cheat on your taxes. Be honest. For the record. Yeah, just, you know, use your judgment. And it's like getting a driver's license. So, you know, use your yeah. judgment and drive safely. You know, last I looked at IRS website one time, this was a little while back, like eh, three, four months ago at least, is that they're trying to figure it out 
regulations in the U.S. Because basically they want to tax it. Because when they tax it, it becomes legitimate. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, something rampant out there. It's legitimate. Yeah, most recently marijuana has been a big, big, illegitimate you know, drug, if we may say, for the longest time. And now they're starting to tax it in most of, a lot of the states in the mainland. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing, yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah, the marijuana, yeah. it's not that harmful. It's about as harmful as, you know, beer, because you can't go drinking and driving, and stoned and, dr I've seen people drive, and I think they're stoned. Slow, <laughs> yeah, they're very, stoned. very slow. But, you know, uh, it's not, like the other drugs and if they separate it then the monies that marijuana makes doesn't go to drug dealers that are dealing in Legally, opiates yes. or or methamphetamine yes. so and Interesting. you get the money out of their hands so you're not supplying drug dealers with income and it does have medical use which is overlooked a lot because people think about recreational use and yeah, I have, uh, just I like know, alcohol yeah. is taxed, marijuana taxed, mm -hmm. state gets stuff, and yeah. I have few friends. Get some jobs, farmers. Farmers, yeah. I have few friends who uh, Maybe smoke. a reaper. Reaper? Pull the little buds off the plant. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to you guys. Um, <laughs> so, evolution. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. So we're here just to discuss what we are doing. And I can only speak on the Odua uh, blockchain. Yeah, but let me tell you what, uh, to point out this revolution, it's gonna happen or not. I mean, for real. I mean, look at block uh, Bitcoin right now. It record, it out broke its own record today. And this is a COVID, this is, this, this is, I mean, this is the end of 2020, Halloween, yeah. 2020, tomorrow's my birthday. What a nice birthday gift that Bitcoin oh, yeah. closed the highest candle ever. So for me, that's all I need and a cup of coffee and maybe Happy a couple birthday. of Dua coins. Happy birthday. Too. Thank you. Yeah. We're using your first name? Call me Max. Mongoose Max. <laughs> Mongoose Max. <laughs> and also, don't forget, check out, he's going to be uh, Sangre Negra. Negro Sangre? Negro Sangre. Sangre Negro. Nah, let's keep it simple. But anyways, yes. On a dua, volatility in the market, because everyone likes trading, so it goes up and down, it scares people. I wouldn't say, let's, I, I need to correct you on that, because not everyone likes trading. I've learned the hard way, only because I kept asking questions and I kept deviating for ex markets over the last three years, and I was corrected. Trading is only a 10% of the market. Traders are the speculators who think the project is going, you know, how the project is doing. They're just trading to make money. It's a process. People make a living. But there's so much more to a, a cryptocurrency project. Trading is always the beginning where people kind of, kind of have that entry where they can make money off the speculation of the project before it even becomes really real right really real in the economy it's just like the speculation so that's what we have right now with the duo there's trading's been happening since pretty much day one we launched which would be december 2018 we launched on crex 24 exchange so the next month it'll be two years officially officially two years old on the since we won uh, what day trading. Some bleh, December 16th or so, oh. December, mid-December 2018. But that's when we went public on the, you know, exchanges. Right. That's just the trading part, just to show people that, hey, the coin is alive and something's happening. So, you know, so the CEO doesn't have to answer everybody's phone and say, hey, I'm alive, checking in with them. I don't okay. know, that's how I see trading is there's people who believe project is doing something and they're speculating in it so they're making money off of it right because the reasons why is. people trade and speculate on the price going up and down is because well basically they want to profit off of it of course but they're also looking into the reason and purpose of the coin mm -hmm. and if it's a 
long-term coin or to something in a fold? They will hold, we call it huddle, right? Well, if a, if a coin's gonna go out of business, they're gonna sell it all off, mm -hmm. all of what they got, and buy something else. Uh -huh. And so, a dual coin's gonna be around for a long time. It's just getting started. It's got like a lot of little things going on early. Like any other altcoin, right? Yeah. And now, it's is it in Africa all the way? Well, first of all, it's decentralized. So anybody, when I go to Odua Explorer, I see uh, miners that are connected. I see about three people in Nigeria that are connected to the servers network, stabilizing the servers. So then we have a Nigerian group. We have, uh, yeah, it's in Africa. It's in Africa. Well, the main purpose is connecting to the African decentralized currency right. coin. Sure. I mean, it has like a main purpose. The main but the same, objective, yeah. Objective. The same main objective it does in Africa, starting off, can be the same main objective in, what's that country? Estonia? Estonia is for regu uh, licensing and money transmitting, oh. money transmit licensing. They're like crypto country. They're the custodians for the exchanges and they give out licenses and saying, hey, altcoin company, you can do business, but you make sure you comply with the here are rules okay. and so you got to pay your fees. If those conditions of the unbanked and underserved in Africa the same conditions can be in Iowa or the Midwest in the U.S. Wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. So the same purpose that Adua coin is applied for to help people underbanked in Africa is the same that's going to be applicable in other places. Absolutely. However, as every project that starts out there has to be a, 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 a an economical reason why it starts and if you th if you got to think of it like this it's a lot easier and more opportunity to target Africa with regulations and the need for it than Iowa United States but as far as the technology can be used anybody could use it anybody well yeah, that's kind of what I'm heading for is that, say you don't have a bank account. Say you can't get some of the stuff. You can use a dual coin as money. Or dual pay, yeah. In, dual in a dual pay. pay. Yeah. So we'll do that. We'll talk about dual pay in market, uh, what do you call those, vendors. Vendors in the market, people have the thing in a dual. We'll get to that, but... Anybody could use it, yeah. Anybody, anybody in the world. Anybody use a dual coin. Yeah. Whether in Africa or here in Hawaii, anybody could use it. But we have to remember that each each territory, each state, each country have their own rules, their own regulations on how they perceive technology. Okay? So, I got to go pay taxes. I'm in, uh, you know, Field of Dreams, Iowa or whatever. For for example, okay. I get some a dual coin, and I don't know. Somehow I have a gain. That was the thing I was going with. Capital I, gain. If ever I make money, a capital gain, I have to report it. Like over what price? If I made twenty bucks, I'm not going to. Two hundred dollars or less. This is according to uh, uh, IRS. If you make two hundred dollars or less you don't have to report it because it's just it's pocket change pocket change but anything over two hundred dollars over two hundred dollars you gotta report gotta do some taxes on your own because you're and remember that is only if you sell sell only if you sell so if you're holding it in an exchange where's a good place to hold your whatever oh well the mining wallet is a gr is the safest place to hold or do a coin get a dual mining wallet how go to a dual coin io and scroll to all the different mining wallets i got mac i will <laughs> <laughs> anyways back on track yeah um 
Regulations. Uh, regulations. Um, or dual coin is, I want to be very, very, um, you know, um, keep it simple. Or dual coin is, we are still in a survival stage. We're at, we're going to be three years old. January 4th, 2021 will be officially three years old since the launch, right? Between three and five years old is kind of the face of, oh, okay, we're becoming, oh, we're growing, we're actually a business. So we're just about to hit that lower part of uh, business. It's for real as a business. Mm -hmm. And we are- A non-bank business. Non-bank business. So Duocoin is compliant, meaning we, small family and friends like yourself, you know, family and friends invested a little bit of pocket change money just to kind of get the flow going, just to kind of, what's that? <laughs> just see, if I held up my hand and see what you'd do. I was kind of shake it. <laughs> shake my hand. Here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not positive. <laughs> We're going to the moon. Okay. Going um, to the moon. But you know, what I'm saying is, uh, and I'm learning all this too, is non bank business non-bank businesses will have to be compliant for the federal government and then there's a local bodies like this is hawaii i have a form here right we're so just, we're like our cryptocurrency a dual coin is a non-bank business mm -hmm. and it's a, it's categorized as fintech financial technology because we're doing we're dealing with technology, with fintech. technology. yep and if we can do business in Hawaii, which we will, that's the plan and goal, uh, we have to be um, uh, compliant with non-bank regulations, which I have here, right? We have to be compliant. Okay. Should we do this in the next segment? Sure, sure. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Hang loose and more to come. Aloha. More to come. Aloha.